Hey guys, what's up? Brent Calmer from Blue Water VST. I want to share a very cool technique with you on using Reactor Spiral Sequencer with Ableton Live. Essentially what we're going to do is allow Spiral to sequence not just a piano, but also a drum sampler. And it's a very slick way of doing it. I think you're going to enjoy it a lot. So our first order of business, of course, is to load Reactor onto one of these MIDI tracks. So I'm just going to load Reactor 5 onto our MIDI track here. And then I'm going to go to New Additions in Factory Content, Ensembles, New Additions, and Sequencers. And Spiral is the third from the top there. I'm going to load this. Now, Spiral is a radial sequencer, which means that these notes kind of orbit around the central point and trigger, uh, trigger the instrument that, that Spiral is connected to. So if I get Ableton's system clock running, you'll see these notes moving around very quickly. I can turn down the speed a bit so you can see that a little more easily. Now those move around, but of course you're not hearing anything because Spiral's not sending its MIDI data to an instrument. It's just kind of sending it off into the void. So what we need to do next is set up an instrument that will receive the MIDI from Spiral. And to do that, I'm going to create another MIDI track by going Command-Shift-T. And then I'm going to drag on one of Ableton Live's racks. I'm going to select from the factory uh, content here, Instruments, uh, Instrument Rack, I want piano and keys, and let's see, Grand Hall is one that I like. So I'm just going to drag that onto our MIDI track. And then you see that there is this rack loaded. Now here we're looking at the macro controls, but if I click on this button at the bottom, you'll see that it expands and shows me everything that's involved here. Right now we have the tension instrument playing a grand piano sound. And then we have an EQ that's kind of tucked right in there. And then we have a reverb here at the end. And you see that anytime there are these uh, uh, green lamps that appear at the top left of the control, it means that those are mapped to one of the macro controls. And so you can collapse all of this and still have access to some of the most important parameters as determined by you, because you can map them yourself. So it's very slick. But right now, it's, uh, it's playing this on this track, but it's not receiving the MIDI from Spiral. So let's come up here to MIDI from and go uh, Reactor 2, and then also in the channel selector, or the input selector, I want to select Reactor 5. So that both of these say Reactor 5, and then I want to set my monitor to in. I'm going to come back over to Reactor, I'm going to open this, and select a snapshot that I like in Snapshot Bank 4, which is called Affliction 2. There it is. I apologize if I'm going a bit fast. Uh, I've done a number of takes of this video, and it's it turns into something very long and very boring if I let myself dally. So I'm just going to get going here. And if you need a refresher, come to the blog, Blue Water VST. And there I have the steps all listed in text form. So here we go. Now we should be able to start the system clock and actually hear the spiral sequencer as played by the piano. Here we go. And indeed, we're hearing that. These notes are confined to F minor. And we can come over here to pitch, for example, and pitch this up. We can come over to spread and change the range in which Spiral will send the MIDI data. We can make that a very narrow range if we wish. I like to have some of those higher register notes. So now let's go back over to our piano track. And what we're going to do now is use the racks chains function to load in another instrument, specifically a drum sampler by the name of Battery that you're all familiar with, that you know and love. And all, to do this, all you need to do is drag it in uh, below in the section that says drop MIDI effects, audio effects, instruments, or samples here. And now I have an instance of Battery in that same track and what I'm going to do is load a kit called, uh, let's see, Mega Synthetic Kit. It's kind of good. It's a nice glitchy kit. Now when I get this going, what I'll find is that both the piano and battery are playing. All of that information is coming through, and it's being played by, p by battery and the piano. You hear every time there's a piano, there's also a drum. That's kind of cool, but we really want to be able to separate the drum track from the piano track. And the way to do this is to come to this key button. 
and this will open up the key map editor and this allows us to select which of the notes are played by which instrument so we can say in this in a specific range all of the MIDI within a specific range will be played by battery and I can click and drag this so I'm saying all of the MIDI within this range is now going to be played by battery I can click and drag this top one to start at C3 and that would mean that all of the MIDI uh, coming in that's at C3 or above will be played by the piano so now we kind of have this division of labor so now if we get the MIDI clock running So it's still, it's still pretty connected with the melody. But there are some other things that we can do to kind of make this a little more dynamic. Now, of course, because we have these two instruments that are playing, we have a sustain, a sustain track, which is really the piano, and battery three. Now what we can do with battery three is, once we have that track selected, we can come up here to MIDI effects, I'm gonna collapse my instruments, and I can select this pitch and this will allow us to select kind of to scroll through some of the battery sounds because what this is going to do is transpose the MIDI pitch that's coming in as it comes in and we can send then the MIDI that's coming from spiral to different cells in battery. So I know this is a little in the weeds, I apologize if it's, if it's not more clear but I think as you experiment with this it will become more obvious. So you see as I'm clicking and transposing this, different, different cells are being activated. And of course I can alter the, the volume here. I may want to bring that piano up a bit. Right now that is uh, mapped to volume. I haven't created a mapping for battery because uh, I just added it. But right now we have this kind of cool, haunting, glitchy texture. It's very inspiring, at least I find it so. So uh, as a final kind of uh, touch, what we can do is add Ableton's beat repeater behind battery to kind of change things up and add some dynamism to it. The way to do that is to go to audio effects and go to beat repeat, drag that on, and then you can kind of audition using this hot swap browser, some of these different presets. There's one that I like, I think it's micro fills. Get that going. Oh, and by the way, a side note is that sometimes you have to have the battery inter or the, the spiral interface open. Sometimes you'll get the system clock running, you won't hear anything. If that's the case, open up the spiral interface and that will solve it. So we can audition some of these others. A very interesting way of looking at letting Reactor generate your sequences and generate kind of interesting textures and ideas. It's kind of like an idea generator. It's a very interesting way of interacting with Reactor. You're kind of turning over the keys to Reactor and saying, you know, tell me what you want to do. Let's hear something interesting here. Uh, another thing you can do is add the random, uh, the random device in live to randomize some of the MIDI that's coming in. So as you can see, there's really no limit to what you could do here. But I hope this is this has uh, been kind of an interesting tour for you on using Ableton's racks in combination with Reactor. Because of course, you can use Spiral, but you can also use the other sequencers. And just as easily as we use this this piano track or this piano device, we could also use one of Reactor synthesizers like Carbon 2 or even Laser Bass if we wanted. So Again, just get in there. I hope you found this, this technique interesting. I hope you'll use it and kind of use it to generate some ideas. Maybe you're stuck. Maybe you're bored with the kind of melodies you've been writing. Get into it and, and, and load up Spiral and see what you come up with. So thanks again for joining me. I hope you found this uh, enjoyable, and I'll see you again soon. Take care, guys.